reach into the neighborhoods, we're going to reach into the barrio, we're going to reach everywhere. The story's out there. Islam, one of the fastest growing religions in America, 1,209 mosques, no 30 second sound bites. Like all other faith traditions, America means home to 7 million Muslims, Michigan, Michigan, Chicago, Houston, Washington, D.C., the whole thing, Detroit, Detroit Iowa, Virginia, Montana, San Francisco, Tennessee, New York City, Los Angeles, Las Vegas, Boston, experience the independent voices of American Muslims, Muslims America. Having traveled around the world, people have always asked me if there are any Muslims in America. And if there are, then are they like any other Muslim? What kind of clothes do they wear? How do they pray? What brand of Islam do they practice? What do they do for a living? To some, this line of questioning would seem strange. Nevertheless, there is a misperception in the outside world about America and the perception is vice versa. And now, when I'm here in America, I'm going to try and find answers to these complex questions. So I head out to a location hidden deep in the woods of Philadelphia. In Chester County, Pennsylvania, some 40 miles west of Philadelphia, lays a shrine of probably one of the first Sufi saints in America, Baba Mahyuddin. It was like being in a fog where everything's out of focus and suddenly you see one thing that's clear and in focus and that's what Bao was like. If he was sitting in the trees and the bushes, everything was slightly hazy, and he was perfectly in focus. And the resonance in Bao, which he said, he said if you take a violin and you strike one of the strings and you hold it next to another violin, that same string in the other violin will start vibrating. And being with Bao was just like that. Mr. Bava Mohyuddin came to America in 1971 and in just 15 short years, brought a subtle tranquility to this region. He was a man who came, didn't speak the language, had no money, had nothing, and then the, the whole community was built in you know, 15 years uh, from that. He passed away in 1986 and is buried here in this calm and serene environment that he and his followers built over the years. But the impact that his legacy has left still resonates in the hearts and minds of thousands of people across the United States. There was a great saint that came to America who demonstrated that a human being is capable of loving all lives as his own life. And that generosity of heart, I think, is the why of our institutions. Just like all other immigrants in America have come from some other part of the world, Baba Muhyiddin came from the mountains of Sri Lanka. He brought Islam to us, from, came from Sri Lanka, and taught us everything, starting with the zikr, la ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah. That was the first thing he taught us. Went right into the qualities of God and gradually introduced all of the practices, the salat and everything. People say that before coming to the U.S., he was meditating in the legendary Adams Mountains. He taught the local residents everything he knew about Islam. And according to his followers, here we're talking about the true tenets of Islam. The only story is his story. So if you're looking for history, look to his story, God's story, Allah's story. That story is the only story that's worth talking about, the only story that's worth hearing, the only story that's worth examining. 
Everybody else's history is just a tiny little blip and doesn't mean anything. But the story of Allah, as emulated, as demonstrated, as, as um, shared by all the prophets, that message that the prophets brought is the only message that mankind needs as a guidance for them in their life. It, it feels like it's a sanctuary, even at the Mazar, at the shrine, and even here. Do you think Islam in America, or if we just talk about this community, Philadelphia, Philadelphia, if you talk about just Philadelphia, do you think Philadelphia would have been the same had Baba Muhyiddin had not come to this place? Well, he certainly, it, it wouldn't have been the same for me. I'll, I can only tell you from my own personal experience that the single most influential person in my life was Baba Muhyiddin. Um, uh, you know, I'm 60 years old. I was born and raised a Catholic and thoroughly enjoyed that experience, having met Baba and having understood that this is a Muslim and this is the way Islam is supposed to be. And this is the only association I had with Islam, was this incredibly um, kind, gentle, sweethearted, but absolutely clear person who seemed to understand what it is that people had within their own heart and also understood what it was that they needed to get rid of within themselves that w those things that were separating th them from Allah. Those kinds of experiences lots of people had with Baha. And because of those experiences, a lot of people came to Islam. So for me, having met a Muslim and perhaps having, um, having those kinds of experiences changed every part of my life from that point on. But what is the actual message of this American Sufi saint, Baba Muhyiddin? I think it takes a really true saint, a really great saint, like Baha'u'llah, to introduce Islam to a country where everybody already believes in one God and they're either Christians or Jews and some Muslims. And without somebody who can actually manifest it himself, I think it would be very difficult. Some might also ask, whom are these Muslims praying to? I took the Shahada with Baha in 1972, or 1973. When I took the Shahada, he said, and made me repeat after him, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah, and explained every part, and he said, what you're saying is, that there is no God but God, and that Muhammad is the messenger of God, and that following those teachings of the Prophet will get rid of the things that separate you from God. So there was never, ever a question of him being in the middle of any of that. Those explanations that Allah placed within him were for our benefit. Allah. Islam has to be an invitation. Islam is an invitation to all of humanity.